Um, Hello, hello. Happy New Year's, guys. It's my first video that I'm filming in 2023, but I feel like by the time I edit and upload this video, it's gonna be well past the first week of 2023. Sorry about that. I'm currently at a coffee shop trying to get some work done and edit some videos for YouTube, but as I was editing, I was like, wow. All my clips are fucking random to the point where I can't really like piece it together in a very smooth, fluid vlog. And I thought, hmm, let me just walk you guys through how my life was like for the past two and a half weeks. Starting with the most obvious change is my bangs. Let me take you guys back around two and a half weeks ago. Let's go. The first new thing you probably noticed about me is my bangs and yes, I did cut my bangs and I also got a perm. One day I was just looking through my old videos and I was like, damn, I miss my old bangs because they honestly make me look a lot younger. So I decided to head on over to my hair salon to get a bang cut as well as a bang perm. I went without a hair appointment, so I had to wait around like 30 minutes, but they were able to squeeze me in. Now, you might be wondering, what is a bang perm? And in order for me to have front bangs, I do need a bang perm because my natural parting is right here. But if you want front bangs, you need to get rid of that natural parting for it to stay. So yeah, that's why I'm here at the salon. Anyways, they began with a cut and this is how it came out to and then comes a bang perm I'm not gonna lie. This is my second time getting a bang perm and this second time that they're doing right now Isn't the proper way of doing it if you want to get rid of your natural party So around a year and a half ago, I made a bang perm video that went viral on tiktok Ever wondered how koreans keep their front bangs from splitting like this? Perm They perm your hair to go the opposite direction of how your hair normally parts. They clip it down to force your bangs in the opposite direction. About 15 minutes. Then shower time. Even did a shake test for you guys. This is the proper way of doing a bang perm if you want to get rid of your natural parting. As you can see right here, my hairstylist did it a different way and I'm going to tell you this. <sighs> and it does not work. I walk, it just starts parting right here. <sighs> Alrighty, in other news, I've been also continuing my acupuncture treatments. If you watch my previous video from like two videos ago, I started getting acupuncture because my neck and traps were getting really, really tight to the point I believe it was causing my headaches. I wasn't able to get any footage last time, so I tried my best getting it this time. As you can see, yeah, they put freaking needles in my scalp because I said I get headaches. Anyways, after they put in the needles, they actually hook up these wires that vibrate. They also do these suction cups um, that are very similar to cupping, I believe. And yeah, to be honest, I do think it's helping a lot. I've been getting less headaches. So yeah, uh, if you guys are wondering why, acupuncture is so cheap in Korea is because it's covered by health insurance. <laughs> I've also been spending my time eating freaking amazing food with friends and even former students of mine. Here is Eugene and here's Emily. I honestly don't have too many social media friends, but here's one of them, Logan. You probably know him on TikTok or even YouTube as well. He actually arrived in Korea on New Year's Eve and we decided to spend New Year's together because we were both free. <laughs> I'm like, it's been so long. You do it to the first line and then isn't it this one too? Living out your dreams in a foreign country is great and all, but it kind of sucks when it comes to holiday season because a lot of the times people spend it with their family and that was the case for me on New Year's Eve. Honestly, I didn't really mind. Hello, hello, hello. Today is December 31st. It's around 10.30 p.m. Okay, sorry. I'm, right now I'm in front of Kyochun Chicken because I'm here to pick up fried chicken. <laughs> Did I bring my wallet? So I was actually gonna just watch Netflix while I was eating my chicken, but I was like, yeah, let's record myself. Uh, I got kitchen chicken entirely of just wings. This is all wings. I already ate one wing. I also got potato wedges. I don't really talk on YouTube, so I thought I'd just spend the time talking. And since I'm eating, I was like, why don't I talk a little bit about food? Specifically, why I don't do what I eat in a day videos. If you think about it, I've been on social media, AKA mostly TikTok, for around one and a half years now. But one of the type of videos that I do not do, or rarely do actually, is what I eat in a day videos. Radish. Person for me, why I don't do what I eat in a day videos is because my appetite changes very significantly. 
Like there are days when I am ravenously hungry and I just eat everything in sight. And there are days when like I literally eat nothing. Okay, like not really nothing, but maybe one small meal and I'm fine. I just don't have an appetite. Uh, I know it's really bad. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's really like that though. And there are days when I like don't even eat a real meal. Like all I want to do is snack. That's what I want to do. Like I want snacks. Like today was one of those days. I just snacked the whole day. I ate ice cream, chocolate, chips. What else did I eat? Cookies. Yeah, I ate a lot of snacks. But there are days when I just don't snack at all. Oh, the thing is, like, what if I film a what I eat in a day in any of those given extremes? A day when I just eat like a fuck ton. And people think that this is what I eat every day and how do I stay so slim? Or something like that. But <laughs> that's not the reality. The reality is there are days when, like, I literally don't eat much. You know what I mean? But it gives a very distorted reality of what my daily consumption is really like. Chicken chickens are so good. Now, one topic that I do hope to talk about more in the future is my relationship with food or even just like the narrative of food in general because I know a lot of girls struggle with the concept of food and the power it holds on them in, in their lives. And to be honest, I'm no different. Uh, I feel like so many people see the things that I eat on social media of like how much I eat, what I eat, how much I snack and stuff like that. And, and most likely have the misperception that like they think that I don't struggle with food at all, but that's definitely not the case. I had my dark moments in my life too, specifically like four years ago. Yo, that shit was bad but one thing that has definitely helped me um ironically is actually moving to korea you would think the opposite because korea is such a superficial vanity filled society but i'm not gonna lie moving to korea has really helped me recalibrate the way i perceive food and i honestly think that it's not just one factor that contributes to why soul kind of helped me and healed me it's a multiple of reasons um one seoul is a very walkable city two there's a social aspect to eating out so i don't really emphasize on calories i see it as a social event where i bond with friends three i'm pretty sure food quality is a lot better here than in the states of course and last but not least it's just the mental impact of being in a new country and feeling like you have a fresh start and that's how i kind of perceived my new lifestyle here in korea and i think that's what definitely helped ah. white kimchi vertical more kimchi vertical as well this is chives i don't know what this is Bomb as fuck. Yes. This is where the talent comes in. Fuck yes. Like, look at that perfect bite. Oh. <laughs> All right, now a lot of people tend to think that I don't work because I never show myself working physically in my TikToks or my videos on YouTube. The thing is, I do work. Uh, it's just that I don't really record me physically working because you're only just going to see me type on a screen for like a couple minutes. Most of the time, my work is in the form of meetings. I'm taking meetings with students and other times I'm writing something, like drafting something up. So yeah. You're going to watch me type on my keyboard for the next couple of minutes because... People on the internet think I don't work just because I don't show it on my YouTube or my TikTok. So let's go. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I thought it'd be a good use of time to do a very small Q&A for you guys. All right, in no particular order. Do your parents live in Korea too? No. What is the hardest change you deal with when you go to Korea? The metric conversions. I don't know what the f Celsius is. See, I speak Fahrenheit. I'm sorry, I'm from um, United States. I don't know what kilometers are. What is the best city for traveling? Seoul. Do you ever feel alone in Korea with your family in the US? Yes, I've made a whole video dedicated to this that I do struggle with loneliness despite having friends and family here in Korea. Would you pursue a different career if you could? Yes. Baking. Are you currently working in Korea? Like, how are you fulfilling your expenses? Yes, I am working. I am a freelancer. I was working at a actual business, but I quit that job and then I became a freelancer. Um, I do not need a visa to be a freelancer here in Korea because I have a Korean citizenship. So yeah. I'm curious about how you feel about being Korean American, but living in Korea right now, do you ever feel like you don't belong? I do know a handful of Korean Americans who do 
experienced uh, race outright racism here in Korea, but I, I thankfully for me, I'm not one of those kind of circumstances who's ever felt that way. Uh, the part where you ask, do you ever feel like you don't belong? No, I personally never f experienced that part. This is just my personal opinion. I fully love being and living in Korea. Your plans for next year. To be honest, this is a little bit of a deeper answer that you guys might have not expected but i know this is such a like lingo that's been thrown around in social media a lot but like healing your inner child but yeah i do believe that there is a part of me that needs healing and that is something that i definitely do want in store for next year what is the best and worst part about living in Korea? I could go into a whole entire separate video regarding this, but I'm gonna do just one of each. The, uh, the best part about living in Korea, for, personally for me, is that it's a walkable city. Uh, the worst part about living in Korea, um, I'm, I might get criticized for this, but the trash system is fucking stressful. What's the best tea you've ever had? Uh, Thai milk tea. I don't know. Do you consider collaborating with other YouTubers? I would. I definitely would. Uh, no one has hit me up yet, so ha ha ha. Is there an underrated place in Seoul, Korea, in general you would recommend people to visit? Absolutely, yes. There is a place called Mulle. This place is very low key, but it's a hot place for actual native Koreans, like especially amongst the younger generation, 20s, 30s. Do you feel South Korea to be safer than the US in general? Absolutely.